All right, great. So uh, let's create a payment gateway. But first, let's talk about BIP39 addresses. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be uh, pretty fresh on um, in terms of uh, not having worked with the technologies before. Uh, I'm gonna just really quickly uh, go on over. So. I don't know what your facility is with Node. It's not too terribly difficult. Um, uh, I've got a small project here um, with a couple of um, files in it. It's, let's just go into it. So I, I use Vim. Um, don't get alarmed. It's it's a kind of an interesting text editor, huh? Yeah, I, I'm an Emacs fan. Well, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. I neither now. So. <laughs> okay, very cool. Uh, yeah, so this is a pretty much empty project right now, but uh, what we'll be doing is bringing in some things from a couple of other places. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, BIP39 is its own. Uh, uh, package uh, in NPM. Mm -hmm. So uh, node package manager. Gotcha. No. Yes. So uh, essentially it controls uh, the mnemonic code for generating deterministic keys. Uh, this is like, let's say you happen to have, um, I'll just start one up. Um, so let's say you happen to have, oh, can't find it. Sure. All right. All right, so let's say you happen to have um, a, a mnemonic uh, that is candy, maple, cake, sugar, pudding, cream, honey, rich, smooth, crumble, sweet, and treat. This is just a, a generic uh, mnemonic. Uh, um, for ad, for uh, the seed phrase generation. Correct? Exactly, exactly. So tr one of the th really cool things that we have available to us is a package called Truffle. Um, and it uh, is sort of a development environment for uh, Ethereum smart contracts. Um, you'll definitely want to look this up. I'll, I'll send you uh, the link. Is this being recorded? I'll have it for reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have it later. Um, I'll also send you. I'll, I'll write some stuff down too. I have a notepad, so I got trouble now. Oh, yeah, totally. Truffle frameworks. Yeah. All right, look at me in. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That actually is really cool. There are a couple of things you can do in it uh, in terms of um, compiling uh, your smart contracts and, and uh, running tests and stuff like that. It also has its own... Uh, web server for running da um, like decentralized applications and things like that. Um, the only reason I'm bringing uh, the development environment it's in, is to showcase uh, the mnemonic and um, and what it can do. So based off of this mnemonic, it's created these um, private keys off of that. You would never want to really use um, you would never really want to use uh, this in production because everyone has access to this particular phrase. Um, but that what it's generated are all of these addresses, right? All of these private keys and all of these accounts, which are just as, uh, basic Ethereum addresses. Um, with that, what it lets you do is let me go to OCC contracts. Um, it lets you do a couple of things, um, like um, uh, 
I'm just going to use the network, uh, the Ropstein net network really quickly. Um, so I have a, a completely different um, seed in, in this application. Um, and it's going to generate a bunch of them and in indices matter. So like index zero through nine. And I have some other neat stuff in that script that will check the balance of the, the addresses and, and display them as well. But this is all of this is controlled um, through the BIP 39. Um, so um, through a couple of, of uh, utilities, there's the HD key, Ethereum JS, uh, utils, and stuff like that. So um, all of those things help. What I would like to do is to, um, get you to where you need to be in order to work on the first uh, piece. Uh, I'd like to get this in, in progress over here and start um, start work on it, maybe assign that to you. Um, so generate ash addresses from the HDC phase. Yeah, so. And yeah, that's you what you use the, uh, you use that other um, just function uh, to get the file and read it from kind of behind the server lines and use it to show it to the uh, merchant, or is that for the generation of addresses that we would reuse for a merchant to receive? Uh, that's for the latter. So what we need is okay. essentially, um, I need the generation piece pulled out of these other projects. So I'm going to send you some some files and some guides. Uh, I'm probably going to list them inside of this issue, um, but I need that to be mostly standalone um, and testing. Um, for for in terms of testing, uh, I gen I tend to use Mocha. Um, in, in node. Um, so, I am okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of set up the, uh, um, sort of the stubs for tests and what have you and, and use that as a uh, I can do that if you have okay. other things. I'm, I, I need, uh, definitely exactly what, uh, the, uh, specs of the job would be. So with the address generated, um, I'm guessing you need to generate it and save it and have that be modular. And so I guess when we're assigning these address to a merchant, um, I'll just keep listening. So I think that is kind of those two phrases though, are my goals for this project, correct? Right. For the, for this issue, um, it's address generation and, um, let me go really quickly and look up. Yeah. QR okay. So we'll, we'll probably skip QR codes for today, but uh, mostly focus on um, how to generate addresses from a seed. There's going to be a, a completely separate piece that, um, that's wrapped around using um, uh, PGP to encrypt the seed uh, and having the, the process for node run under a user account that has um, that has access to that PGP key. So uh, everything's encrypted at rest uh, when we're creating the addresses for, for merchants. Oh, um, we exactly. don't have, essentially, we don't have access and, and anyone attacking the, the machine would need to get past a lot more uh, Linux infrastructure in order to, um, to pull anything useful from the configuration files because um, the seed's going to be um, something kind of like this. So, um, skip that. Um, yeah, here we are. So, in here, I'm just going to um, print out what. Um, print out what my uh, mnemonic looks like when I save it to GitHub and stuff like that. So um, that's that's how it'll be saved. Um, so you save it as a PGP message where we're going to encrypt it with our kind of master PGP key to get them unencrypted. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So um, that piece 
uh, we can check these files in we'll, uh, and not um, have to worry about um, sort of controlling the privacy of that. Um, it's, it's pretty safe in terms of, of what we're dealing with here. Um, having everything encrypted at rest, even, you know, even if, for instance, we, we might be actually taking um, ASCII armored uh, PGP keys from merchants if they want things like um, their email or whatever encrypted. So if anyone asked us, hey, who are your users and what are their emails and phone numbers and what have you, um, only our service account would have the ability to, in to decrypt and send um, emails or anything like that, any notifications that we need. But, you know, just if anyone got into Mongo or something like that, they, they wouldn't know what the, the values were and we wouldn't know what the values were. Um, uh, so I, I think that's kind of the best way to, to have it where we just don't have access to that. Um, so that's a completely separate issue, but first I want the generation um, of the addresses and then we'll go and encrypt the seed from which that generation, uh, the generation occurs. So we'll focus on that. Um, that's going to require um, three, uh, three packages. Uh, so BIP39. Cool, that's the seed generation uh, package itself. Cool. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's that, um, HD key and, um, there I am, JS util. MPM, uh, I wrote these written down HD key, um, uh, just blank it on the first one real quick, uh, Ethereum JS. Ethereum JS util and and all of these will be put in, directly into the issue so that um, okay, yeah so no worries there and a, a quick example of how that works we'll want to uh, write tests on this sort of just to make sure we can run it and I I think it'll be best if we um, permissify it I guess so. Um, are you familiar with promises in, in, Java, in JavaScript? Uh, yes, but what do you mean by permissify? Okay, so instead of returning, um, taking the seed in and returning it, what we'll have is um, actually a return a promise. Are you familiar with the term thunk, like an anonymous kind of promise? Are you gonna... Well, so the it's not going to be anonymous, but um, you're essentially just returning a promise. Like, I'm sure I have it in here somewhere. Um, here, here we go. So, like so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I understand why. That's what I was thinking. So. Okay. So right now, um, let's go back to uh, a project that's pretty empty right now. There's not a lot going on here. Um, I'm gonna create a source directory and um, one of the things I've done in the past is sort of um, treat things as stores. So let's see. Just gonna showcase some of the things I've done before. Um, a lot of times I'll have like static files or whatever share some of the core files. Um, so like there, um, in this particular scenario, I'm using React and stuff like that, but I have some core files that are um, actions, observers. Um, there are some prov providers like for instance, um, what's bringing, you know, how to instantiate Web3 and then their stores like, you know, get an account, you get the various blocks, get some events off the blockchain. Um, what is, you know, here's one that all, the only job of this particular store is to get the current gas price. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so, um, and most of these things are, are um, based off of promises or whatever. So, uh, for instance, 
I'm not sure that the version of um, these secrets, yeah, so it's not returning a promise at the moment. And it might be the, in fact, that it's, it's a little bit IO bound, but um, it might be fast enough that we can have this be synchronous. So um, let's leave that as a, as a to do to figure out whether or not I actually do need to, um, whether or not we need to return a promise and we, we might not, we might just want to return um, the address um, and then just have that and, and, and have a, a script or two that pretty simply return um, something that we can run on the con on the command line to test this piece so that we can just pass it an in index or something like that and and let it let it run so we'll work together on this but um i kind of wanted to make sure you had s sort of a, a starting point um of where to go with this uh, but that's pretty much it it's it's pretty simple address generation off of a, a uh, mnemonic. The password is going to be pretty interesting because one of the things we can do is is have the merchant send in a password, and that 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 will take um, that that uh, phrase, which you know you've seen already, um, and it'll comp it'll make completely different um, private keys and completely different um addresses if if you're using the same mnemonic but you're using a different passphrase which mm -hmm. is kind of cool so even if that gives you a little extra security in terms of if and it's something that we will want to enable in terms of having that in the function but most of the time it's um the password itself is undefined and all you're getting is the is the passphrase and not the password um, but if we enable something like that, then every merchant would have a completely different uh, hierarchical, uh, like a, a completely different tree of of, uh, of accounts mm -hmm. from a, from so the other merchants. And you need both to get into the account every exactly. time. Exactly. Um, well, so uh, let's talk about logins for just a brief moment, and and then call it a day. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking that the a cooler thing than actually storing any passwords at all would be to have um, to have the like we'll create a like something unique and and, and signed by us the um, the merchant has to determine what it is and then sign it with their key. So, uh, and all of that stuff is pretty simple to take care of in a, in a decentralized application. So when they're signing in, they would, you know, let's say they might need to connect MetaMask or connect a, a Trezor wallet or something like that. Or if they're running from inside their own wallet, or if we created our own wallet, we could have the application sign their pass, uh, their password, or you know, which is just a throwaway GoID or something like that that we create. Mm -hmm. So we never store a password. Our their password is. Could you successfully sign, um, sign a, um, a secret between us and them? with their private key from for an ethereum address so and um so in dumb in layman's terms that's uh that would mean like if you can if you're eligible to send the what does that mean well yeah so um like let's say i were let me go really quickly and um i don't know let's do something simple oh. Um, so let's yeah let's go look at this and let's i'm just gonna log into a completely different account here okay so um this is the 
made a mask um, on the Ropstein network and I have a, mm -hmm. an account here. Let's see. There we go. Um, oh yeah. So I, I've done the QR code generation before um, and something we're going to need a, again. Um, but yeah, so this is going to run a particular. Um, this is that first arrow on the flowchart diagram where it goes to the PayPal-esque gateway, kind of? That's right. Kind of well, something like that. So this whole piece here where you're confirming a transaction, um, it, what MetaMask is asking me to do is to sign this transaction. Now, instead of signing a transaction, what we would do is have, um, have MetaMask display the secret and then say, okay, sign this phrase for us and submit that and what oh, it would so do like is this the real site sort of like a cap like just uh, it's a uh no it's like can you sign this secret and if you can sign the secret it's not going to send any money or any um or or perform a transaction on the blockchain it's just going to sign it and we're going to capture that in javascript and then send it back to our servers say and if if it matches their address and it's signed by by them, then that's as good as their login. And, and they don't have to remember logins because their, uh, their Ethereum wallet is going to remember their, their private key. And if they have access to their private keys, that's as good as, as a signature. Oh, so, okay, so, all right, sweet. All right, so their private key signs it and that's, that returns the server, that's the login for the wallet. Right, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, this example is just the, the old airdrop um, in Ropstein, granted. So, um, well, yeah. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, so let me just reiterate. Yeah. Um, okay. So, to clarify, I believe my first couple tasks are um, get the seeds generated um, from the mnemonic and implement what needs to. So, the mnemonic is generated, and I need to go from the. Gen so I guess I'm just looking, I was looking at the GitHub. Yeah. The part I fill in that is missing that would be different from the BIP39 as um, standard is the function there. We have to fill that one that you showed me the main screen up at the end of the show of the code that you just did. The last screen, I think. Okay. So you, you, the inputs are in that, you know, um, seed phrase or mnemonic, um, pa uh, index and uh, password. So. And the mnemonic that's going to be generated. So that's taken care of. Uh, yeah. So for, for this issue, let's, let's put, um, gosh, what was that? Let's just use this um, let's use this seed. It's the test ones. Okay. All right, cool. So I don't do that part and I do the rest. I use the uh, seed yes. after the mnemonic. That's thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so we're we're, we're going to want to um, play around with um, including you know passing in undefined or whatever. So. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, like, I took off one piece because I think that's kind of separate. Assigning them to merchants will, will be a different piece. Um, and there you have it. Yeah, that's enough instruction. Um, do you have a specific deadline? Uh, no. Would Wednesday uh, be, or just any time, but I'll 
Wednesday the latest? Is that problematic? No, Wednesday. not at all. I think that will be, you know, it, it's more about just understanding the pieces that are, that are uh, the moving parts and what have you. We don't really have a deadline. It's, it's open source work and it's, you know, uh, volunteering. So um, we're not going to really push that that hard. But we do need these pieces in for the first phase, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about any more than that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Sweet. I'm excited. I'll get on this and I'll keep you posted. All right. Thanks. All right. Sweet. And uh, my GitHub page is fine too. Just pull and you'll give me a. Do I have permission on that for you to push? Oh, it? yeah. You've got permissions to push right now. Um, it's pretty safe to push a master, but once we get more than two people in there, we're, we'll start using PRs and what have you. I mean, we can do that now if you would like. Um, I don't mind branch and I can do that myself. Oh yeah, fine. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But you, you have, um, access to, to the repo. So yeah, clone away. All right, man. Sounds great. Have a great night. Thank you for this, uh, bit of your time. Yeah. Thanks. All right, cool. All right. Bye.